A female soldier seeks help from Siji to provide a young boy cataract surgery to regain his vision. A local volunteer prepares vegetarian lunch boxes to frontline medical teams in 12 hospitals. Welcome to the headlines. I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. There was a conflict in the Philippines in 2017, and many children became orphans due to separation from their families. Here we meet a young boy, Mark, who lost his vision due to cataract, but was saved by a female soldier, Anna, with some help from Tima. Matapos po ang mga rawi seeds, may mga bata pa po na mga nakuha sa ilalim ng mga lana sa mga magulang at pagkakakilanda. At gusto rin nilang mabigyan ng magandang kinabukasan yung mga batang yun, kaya binigay po siya sa akin. The war three years ago has started the connection between Mark and Anna. This orphan has a family now, but his life is not smooth yet. Nakagraduate naman siya ng kinder. Nung pagka-grade one niya, after Mark graduated from kindergarten and entered first grade, I found that his vision became very poor and we didn't know what happened. Why would he get an eye disease at a young age? Filipino team of doctors arranged a surgery immediately to check it out. In an explosion, there's a small, small particle that was uh, lodged in his lens. Mm -hmm. So that caused cataract formation at the age of four. Uh, fortunately, it did not cause any infection. The first one I could think of was Chi-Chi to help my son undergo surgery because they have great ophthalmological techniques. Thank you for Chi -Chi foundation. After the surgery, Mark has regained his vision completely. He will, look, he will become more positive and uh, he will learn from this that uh, Things can change in his life and everything can be better. Under the current epidemic, volunteers paid extra attention on food distribution in Siji, New Jersey chapter. They have come up with a new way people can now stay in the car as volunteers transfer food baskets into the car to avoid close contact. Good morning. Who is going to sign? You are going to sign, right? Okay, wash your hands first. In Chi Chi Li chapter, food distribution was held outdoor instead of indoor. Okay, Under the okay. current epidemic, everyone paid extra attention. You see, our volunteers are wearing masks and gloves, and it is raining now, so we need to put on caps and raincoats. Three volunteers were grouped together to help with this infection, signage and transferring food baskets. They have also paid attention to small things. They need to spray hand sanitizers because they need to sign. We hope that the pan they use is clean, we will disinfect it later. The distribution site was just by the row. The drivers did not need to get out of the car to minimize the chance of contact. I like it, yes. Why? You know why? Because the beetle. This help you, everybody, and, and help you guys. So. Instead of waiting in line inside, yeah. we do a drive through and you stay in your car. Yeah. That's better than McDonald's, right? <laughs> Everyone had tested understanding on epidemic prevention. When packing food, volunteers wore masks and gloves and remind others of washing hands and disinfection, making the distribution to finish successfully. Many mask factories in Thailand have been recruited by the government to produce masks, and they have been working non-stop to meet the needs of the public. A mask factory in Zhanghua, Taiwan, recently received three machines from the government, and its production improved drastically. The machines have been rumbling non-stop to keep making masks. To meet the demand of society, we don't mind working hard. Soldiers have been called on to work at the assembly lines. 58-year-old Miss Yen is a senior employee. She once was so distracted that one of her fingers was severed by the machine, so she is taking rest at home. The soldiers took care of one assembly line, and I took care of another one. These soldiers were new, so they didn't know how to do it, and I went to help them. The new assembly machines have been brought to the factory, but they are short of workers. We've been hiring more people, and at this moment, we're looking for 30 people. We have five machines to begin with, and we can produce 250,000 masks every day. And the new three machines can produce 300,000 masks every day. 
the production will improve drastically. Masks are very valuable, so we must wear them correctly to protect ourselves. The blue side is waterproof, so it must face outwards to stop the droplets. You must pull the mask open when you want to wear it and press down the metal on your nose. We must make sure this side part stays close to our face. We can put this clip to pull the string on the mask. If you can wear the mask correctly, it can keep you healthy. During the recent coronavirus epidemic prevention period, the city Sanchong ground has seen fewer staff as some 40 volunteers are now busy making cloth masks. To give them encouragement, Dharma masters from Jin Sebo visited to care for them and present them with special tea tree oil, which they made themselves. There are fewer staff and activities, but the one thing that hasn't decreased during the epidemic is the amount of recycled materials. Resources such as paper, bottles, cans are classified by recycling volunteers. Dharma masters from the Jingsa abode made a special trip to care for them. This is from Master Jingyan, who cares for you. We made it ourselves. Thank you. Master Zhen Yan cares for you. Thank you for being so good. This shows the care of Master Zhen Yan. It is tea tree oil. Before you eat something, please spray a little on your hands. It is like washing your hands. The Jing Sanchong Grounds Handicraft Workshop is full of activity now, as many are making masks to deliver to care recipients, recycling volunteers, and medical staff. I can't drive or do some other things, so I thought that I could contribute what skills I have to help. If I do a little bit, we can support the medical staff who are working really hard. We can support them behind the scenes, which is something quite good. Office workers spend their weekends helping others, with some overseas Taiwanese businesses unable to travel. They are now contributing their skills to produce more much-needed masks. After the city of Wuhan was closed on January 23rd, one of the volunteers, Chen Ge, knew that the medical staff at Frontline had their meals irregularly, and many of them just had instant noodles instead. So she thought of providing vegetarian meals to the medical staff in 12 hospitals. <laughs> The chef is stir frying green vegetables while several different dishes are being cooked in other stoves at the same time. This is the star restaurant in Wuhan. Since February the 23rd, the cooking team is very busy every day. Operating the vegetarian restaurant for many years, we should try our best to do something for the medical staff at this moment. Lunch boxes they prepared were actually entrusted by Chi Chi volunteers. Originally, some volunteers wanted to express their gratitude to medical staff personally. It later turned out to be regular provision of meals. The medical staff have no choice. Putting on the white uniform, they are the white angels. They have to stand at the front line to combat the epidemic and cannot withdraw. We have to do something for them. Because a lot of vegetarian restaurants in Wuhan are not allowed to open yet. We do all this in mid-dish restaurant while following the requirements of a vegetarian diet. We not only teach them how to do vegetarian meals, but also help them find vegetarian ingredients. Since Wuhan is closed, volunteers needed to have entry permit to go to the city. They called for volunteers in social media. A total of 175 person times volunteered in just half a month. Depending on any donation or assistance from outside medical teams seems like a drop in the bucket. It is too distant to help us. It is better for us Wuhan people to take action. I think this group of volunteers seem like a group of angels or a bridge of love. They deliver the love from other people and companies to the hands of the medical staff in the front line. A total of more than 11,000 of lunch boxes were provided in 15 days, allowing the medical staff in 12 hospitals to be able to take care of their health in busy work. We can feel the love and dedication of person who cook this. 
because it is very colorful and fragrant, and is very nutritious too. So everyone here is very grateful to him. Thank you. Thank you, volunteers, for sending lunch to us, medical staff. It's very delicious. Thank you, everybody. Facing the COVID-19 threat, city volunteers continue to promote vegetarianism to safeguard the planet as well as living things. Next, we meet two children from Jilin who are advocating this lifestyle and ideal to those around them. For Mother's Day, Yun Bing Yi gave her mother a foot bath and wrote her a song. <laughs> As her parents are both city volunteers, Yun grew up in a loving environment where not harming animals is her reason for being a vegetarian. Zhang Xixue was born a vegetarian, and she has been advocating this diet to her family. Even her most opposed family member, her grandfather, relented to her campaign. I used to tell you to eat meat, and you didn't. You're so big now, and you still haven't eaten meat. I am even going along with your request to be a vegetarian. There is harmony and laughter thanks to the exclusion of meat at the dining table. To pray for the epidemic to end soon, the Jin Step Building Hualien held a worldwide prayer event through the internet, allowing volunteers living overseas to join. Despite the time difference, those overseas volunteers still overcame it and prayed together for the world. Chinese volunteers from around the world go online for a lunch prayer ceremony. Some volunteers in Myanmar also take part at the Chiji Myanmar office. The praying mats have been placed further away from each other, but the volunteers still pray sincerely. I pray sincerely for the whole world. I pray that the world is safe without illness nor disaster. When we have great force of goodness, we can destroy the force of evil. So we must be sincere vegetarians and pray sincerely for the well-being of the earth. It is not just the Chinese volunteers. Local Burmese volunteers living in Tanling leave home at 4 in the morning because of the same vow. Although we live quite far away, we were still willing to come to the office in Yangguang and pray for the world peace. Around 20 people gather at the city Vietnam office and chant the Sutra of Universal Gate. Local volunteers do not understand Chinese, but they still pray sincerely. Many people believe that when the magnetic field and the thoughts of goodness gather together, they will create a very powerful energy, and this energy can stop the epidemic from spreading. I believe in it deeply. Volunteers in various parts of Malaysia also go online to pray. Some do it at home, while some are in the city offices. Together, they pray for the well-being of the earth. Von Karman, born in Malaysia and working as a doctor in the UK after graduation, she vows to become a doctor in Mozambique and has won the blessing from the master. Before leaving, she shared her experience with the people in Malaysia. 
Siji volunteer Ong Kai Men has been working in the UK. Recently, she shared her relief experience in Mozambique with Siji volunteers in Malaysia. I gave a hundred people medicine today, but only one person got better since then. Can I ignore it? Ong Kai Men shared what she sold and expired the medical insurance. She can be very brave in order to find the purpose of being a doctor. She can abandon the carefree days, what we have now, and went to a place where there is nothing and lacking supplies like Mozambique. When both medicine and medical treatment doesn't have any effect, we still have love. Sometimes we really can't make it, but at least we still have love and care to the patients so that they can spend the remaining time happily. Quitting her job in the UK, Ong Kai Men is about to go to Mozambique to start her medical practice. I'm going to Mozambique. I've waited for a long time and finally got the blessing from the master. In terms of medical care, I hope that more can be done to help local doctors accomplish something. I hope we can launch small or medium-sized free clinics. I hope I will not only provide medical services, but also education, humanities and charity. Ong Kai Men hopes that more people can join the ranks and share love together. In the morning, many people eat toast as part of their daily breakfast routine. However, internet rumors raise concerns about consuming one piece of toast every day, linking them with cancer. Doctors say that burning toast creates acrylamide, which can be a health risk, so there is no clear data linking it to cancer in humans. Adding a layer of jam to this toast, whether it is blueberry, strawberry, or marmalade, is something that many people look forward to. It's quick and convenient as toast is a part of many people's breakfast. Right after it is toasted, it is quite crisp and has a wonderful feeling in the mouth. It is delicious. Many people love toast, especially that which was recently toasted. However, on the internet there are rumors that toast can cause cancer. I don't really believe it because I eat toast every day. I think it is okay and it isn't a worry. I don't think it's so bad unless you eat it every day and toast it until it's black. In fact, the dark part of toast creates something called acrylamide. In animal research, it is carcinogenic to mice, but in research on humans, there's no strong evidence that acrylamide can cause cancer. Doctors say that toast which hasn't turned black or coffee color should not be a concern, but if it is black, it's best not to eat it as there could be a health concern. You should check to see how black you have made your toast. If it is really so black, then you shouldn't eat it. But if it is golden yellow, then I think that one or two slices is okay. Doctors urge people to look carefully at their toast and think about their health before making any decision about consumption. Labor groups have pointed out that many middle-aged and elderly people who are employed for a second time will find jobs that need to lower in their professional threshold. It is hard for them to make best use of past experience, which may potentially be a waste of valuable human resources. Is it possible to change this phenomenon? Here's our report. In eastern Taipei City, the teacher is working hard to help the children review arithmetic in class, while Zhang Jindao cares about students' attention to their studies. Zhang Jingdao is a retired principal of a public elementary school and later entered a private institution to begin her second career. We will watch from the side when we have a new teacher. We will help them smoothing out the transition of teaching. With her 31 years of education experience, she designed courses and leads new teachers as well as engaged in class management teacher-student interaction and communication with parents. Middle-aged teachers and young teachers can work together. The experience will naturally come forward and they can communicate with young people. So there's no problem. They are definitely welcome. When they see how older teachers do things, they calmly inherit this experience and new teachers will be more at ease. The professional career experience accumulated by middle-aged and senior employees has been favored by many business owners. But just like the plot of the movie The Intern, in the real world, it hasn't been so smooth. 
They can do one of the two jobs. One is called labor, and the other is called sales. They might do night shifts or delivering things, but seniors may have poor physical strength. Can they do it? They can't do it. A survey by the Ministry of Labor shows that the frontline services, business, marketing and sales and other occupations are the top five for job banks. Elder employees are very patient and more harmonious in interpersonal interactions. I think service-oriented work is suitable for elders. Although the public's intentions and the needs of manufacturers generally match, however, such jobs usually have low technical barriers. Professional skills accumulated by middle-aged and elderly people in the past may not be the best utilized. We can't just look at the employment rate. Do you have work? We have to look at the reality and see if there may be more suitable. In terms of labor itself, is it really winning or not because of economic pressure? The employment market for middle-aged and older people must not only be observed in terms of quantity, but also pay attention to quality. If in a short period of time government measures and the corporate environment can value the professionalism of these older workers, then a win-win situation for labor and management can be achieved. At 9 a.m., a 68-year-old, Zhu Fugui, is working at an organic food mall in eastern Taipei City. She shares product information with customers. Welcome. Ah, ah, ah. I couldn't speak on the first few days, and then on the third day, I opened up and was able to speak. This thick stack of class notes showed her notes, which helped her memorize and train herself with gestures. Su Fugui trembled every day, as if returning to her student days while preparing for an exam. Even if you are 40 years old, can you imagine that you are 25 years old? Would you like to give yourself a chance? Middle-aged people may be slow at remembering things, but they will share the information in their own way. It's like saying that I bought a great and delicious food in a supermarket today and can't wait to share it. Bowing to customers and treating them with respect impresses many as these middle-aged and elderly people have the opportunity to redefine professionalism and create a win-win situation with employers. We also found a lot of manufacturers who would be willing to work with us again. We hope we can help recommend elder workers to them. Taiwan is about to enter a super-age society. The government has stepped up efforts to develop jobs for middle-aged and seniors that are a good fit with their professional background. Companies may soon need to break through the current employment structure and improve the professional capabilities of citizens to truly solve the employment problems we currently face. And the Clean India of Australia volunteers in Sichuan's cleanest streets and hosted a vegetarian picnic to prevent the virus spread. Take a look and goodbye. <laughs>